well, I always win because he doesn't argue back. <laughs> yeah, I like those kind of arguments. Um, so, so, a couple problems we'll do. Remember, what we're working with right now is the uh, the uh, change in energy of the system, which comes from the fact that there might be a difference between what's going in and what's going out. And if what's going in is a little bit more than what's going out, then the change in energy of the system uh, will tend to be positive and will tend to increase. We're looking at that for our purposes really from two places. Uh, sorry, three places. One is a change in uh, the, the symbol we use is capital U. Who remembers what that is? Sound it out. U. It's umbrellas. Increase in umbrellas. Unicorns. Why didn't my two women students come up with that? Unicorns. Especially if you're in the My Little Pony Club. Aren't they into unicorns? Or what? So I'm more of a Pegasus person, so. <laughs> Whatever. Isn't, isn't there a, a Pegasus unicorn? There's got to be. That'd be like a super creature. <laughs> yeah. A Pegasus. <laughs> Somebody must have. I was walking across campus the other day, and there was like. You weren't flying? <laughs> no, not this time. But there is some guy in the Milo Pony Club saying that he combined a unicorn pegasus and a pony and got a unipegasi. <laughs> and he was talking about how good in combat this unipegasi <laughs> What? What did the I had to write it down because I just started oh. dying. <laughs> wow. What did the pony contribute? <laughs> so the size decrease. It got me small. Yeah, for, for mobility. <laughs> but wings aren't enough for mobility? <laughs> uh, well, I guess so, because uh, uh, vultures aren't very mobile, but like uh, what do you uh, mean, vultures a, aren't Cooper, a Cooper's hawk is very, because they're smaller, their wings are shorter, and they're for flying through trees. Vultures well, don't do agile. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, or, yeah, uh, vultures aren't very agile. Yeah, and they're so already be dead. a yeah, Pegasus. Sure. But a unicorn vulture. That's a unicorn a vulture. Unit. They could kill. Uh, they could be anyway. <laughs> <in this guy. laughs> wow. Where were we? <laughs> Can we have some of your dish salt? Right. Oh, oh yeah. Is, is Who? Yes. See, in that time, in that in that period of distraction, somebody could have looked in their notes of what you was, and then been like the. Sp been the, smartest, <laughs> been the smartest one in the class. That's the internal energy, which uh, for the most part, if you want to use some colloquial, it might be something like the, the heat content. How much heat is there? Warm stuff has more energy in it than does cold stuff. And uh, uh, that's a lot of the deals that we're working with here. But then also changes in KE and PE. Uh, for a lot of our problems, that might be, or those might be, um, those might be zero. If uh, you know, pumps don't typically move themselves. However, they certainly can elevate the fluid to a certain height. So you have to make sure, uh, are we talking about the, the uh, system being the apparatus itself or the fluid within it or even both? And there's a couple problems, I think, in the book where they talk about how changing the boundary can actually change the problem a little bit. And then if we look at a time rate of change of, of those kind of things, then we have uh, other parts to it. Um, typically, 
in this class, as opposed to what we did in Physics 1 and, and uh, some other classes, as a couple of you may see in the Dynamics class, using that dot notation where uh, in Physics 1 we use it as any time rate of change, in this class that tends to be a flow rate designation. If we use the dot designation, it's because that substance is actually flowing from one place to another. So m dot is certainly appropriate because that's the amount of mass that's flowing per unit time. But uh, we wouldn't put an e cis dot because it's not generally the engineer or the the energy of the system that's flowing. It's just the energy of the system that's increasing or decreasing at a certain rate. However, uh, they can be, as we can, we can see, that's what happens when the board's not in focus. We can relate these to each other by some mass flow rate that's doing the convecting in of these uh, particular um, these particular energies. And so the notation itself becomes a, a bit of a trial, a bit of a burden at times. Remember why these went to lowercase? Those are the lowercase means they're on a per mass basis because I pulled the mass out as well as the, the DT. So we got to be careful with some of this to some regard, but it does get confusing, um, including for me because I'm kind of out of practice with this stuff. And plus, every author does things a little bit differently. That's why authors write new textbooks because they didn't like the way some other guy did it. So I can do it better. So they write it their way, um, which I guess is good because otherwise, why write a textbook if you're just doing this the exact same way? So Everybody does their own little thing. All right, so let's do a couple problems using this kind of these kind of ideas, and then we'll uh, we'll introduce something new with with uh, that generally goes well with another problem itself. So uh, imagine we have a room at some ambient temperature. Sometimes we'll put a symbol like that. That just means the the temperature of the infinite uh, infinite area there, or the ambient. We'll take that to be 20 degrees C, and inside that room there is a hundred watt bulb. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking, but we use compact fluorescent lights now. And so a 100 watt bulb would have to be like this big. But just play along, okay? We don't have to make a fight out of everything we do. Uh, 110 watt. Oh, we said a word. <laughs> Stop disagreeing with me. 110 watt television. Compared to a 100 watt bulb, I'm gonna say a word on that one. That's ridiculous. Why? What's your TV? No, but compared to a 100 watt bulb, I don't know. That's just ridiculous. What's going on? It's only <laughs> it's a one amp television. It's it's normal. No. But <laughs> See, she's worried more about is that a 60 inch flat screen plasma because. I'm not even going over to anybody's house unless it's just at least 60 inch. So the rest of us will work on some problems there. And now I'm afraid to write down anything. A 200 watt fridge. Well, that's the mini fridge. That's on the low side. Yeah, it's a dorm room. Where all you guys live. You live in dorm rooms. And if you don't, I'm going to put you there. 
and a thousand watt iron. Now you guys don't know what that is. That's a thing that is used to take wrinkles out of clothes. I put wax on skis with mine. Yeah. Bet your bet your mom is thrilled. Don't even bother, Alan. <laughs> You you are. You, That's why I wear these stretchy things so they don't. You've got don't have to wear yeah, the wrinkles. Man, oh man. All right. So what I'd like you to find out is the rate at which the room energy is changing. Yes, Alan, you too. What? Nothing. No, I'm just going to follow you along. You're recording, right? Mm hmm. I think so. That's why. Do you want me to point the camera at you? No. It's I hope I get to drink some of your dish soap. Mm -hmm. He's. <laughs> we know how ignorant that statement was, don't we?
just so they match, we can put it like that. Are any of these parts zero? Well, specifically, if this is what we're looking at, we can either look at this part and do it that way, or this part and do it that way. Is this zero? How's, there's, remember I said it was a well-insulated room, so how is any energy coming in? I said it's a well-insulated room. That has to do with any heat loss or heat gain. I didn't say it was an isolated room. I said it was an insulated room. So energy is coming in through the wires for these four things that are running. So this is not zero. Is this zero? Of course, Electrons are coming in the, in the wires. Some of those electrons are spilling out and running under the floor and going out the room. Well, much of it's getting lost as light. I mean, it's most, most of it's getting converted to light, except the bridge and iron. But the well, and the TV are most uh, of the light. Remember, with incandescent bulbs, that's the trouble it's with them. Energy. So little of the energy is light, most of the energy is heat. But what did I say about the room? Insulated. Well insulated. Um, TV's making some, some, uh, some heat. The light is very, very little energy, even it's going out the windows. The what about the refrigerator? It cools things down. Puts out a lot of heat. Puts out a lot of heat. If you go feel behind your your refrigerator, or even more fun. Put, uh, put your loaf of bread up on top of your refrigerator in the summer and watch how long that piece of bread lasts because it's warm up there. And the iron, of course, in your, in the gentleman, uh, you don't even know what this is or where it is, or it may not even be ski season, so you don't need it. I thought it was an electric golf ball. And some of you, uh... <laughs> 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 whacker on the front of it. So it was, I mean, that'd, be, that'd be brilliant. Um, we could ask, oh, I don't know, who should we ask? Because there's also, I think, uh, iron they use for straightening hair. But who could we ask about that? Not my hair. Not my hair is not my hair. What are you asking? <laughs> Aren't, don't people straighten their hair with hair irons? Yes. Straightening irons? Yes. Taylor, is that what they're called? Yeah. yeah. But you have naturally beautiful straight hair anyway. Oh, yeah. Paul does. No. <laughs> Unfortunately. I don't know. So, what about this turn then? It should be zero. He said zero with some confidence and then folded. But there's got to be an energy going up. <laughs> the temperature which would go up. Well, it's a well how's the energy room. getting out? I said it's a well-insulated room. Yeah. How's the energy getting out? I didn't see, even say there were windows. You assumed that. I didn't say there were windows either. <laughs> you said light was getting out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, well, actually, you didn't say windows, but I assume that's how the light was getting out. Not, the, the, not up the chimney. <laughs> so, this term is zero. What about any of these terms? Well, we don't care because we have this equal to that. That's what we're looking at. So, we don't need to, to compound things with the intermediate term. Then the next question is, is, is 
Are the units right? Are the units right? Is watts an energy rate? Yes. Yes, it is. So, God forbid, Alan was correct. All we need to do is add those up. That's all the energy coming in. If none of it's getting out, then that's the energy increase of the room. It's as simple as that. What was that, Alan? 1410? Yep. Just sum it up. Some of the problems are really very easy, but in thermal, they're also very, very easy to make way more complicated than they're intended to be. So be careful with those. Some of these problems are actually quite simple. And uh, the temptation is to make them hard because you think they're supposed to be. But that's sort of the subtle nature I told you about. I didn't tell you thermal was difficult. I told you it was subtle. For some of you, that's a difficulty. What? I, just the, the T sub infinity, was that just supposed to mean, that doesn't mean constant, that, right? It's, it's, it's no, that well, the room, in, the room was at 20 degrees when all these things were turned on. When it turned, okay. Yeah. Right, so but it didn't matter because it wasn't part of the question anyway. It, it was none of that. Well, I just was, I, none of that was used. That infinity symbol, it looks like, it means like it's, it means constant or something. I don't, like, it's gold. No. It's Forever. It's no, it generally means either the ambient, or the, you know, the, the surroundings, or for some of our problems where we have a system that's either drawing heat or energy from the outside, the universe, if you will, uh, that would that would then we'd mean it as the surroundings. That had so there's nothing constant about it. That had nothing to do with it. It's a red herring. All right, so another problem. A fan accelerator, and by this I mean a, an air fan, not a, uh, a Super Bowl fan. Isn't that this weekend? Mm -hmm. Is anybody playing? Oh, no, yeah, I mean, you know? You didn't know oh, no. Was, it? You, yeah. That's awesome. Do you have to straighten your hair for it? Yeah. You put your helmet on? <laughs> no, they, 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 no, I've seen their... They, they don't have, they have curly hair coming out of their helmets, that big long hair. I don't know why somebody didn't grab that and tackle them. You know the coaches are brothers? Yeah. Did you know what? Yeah, I heard that about 12 million times. I don't know what ears. Why don't they just play each other? I bet that mom is so proud. Okay, a fan accelerates air from 10 meters to 10 meters per second at four meters cubed per second. So what's that term? That's the flow rate, the volumetric flow rate. Not the mass flow rate, but the volumetric flow rate. And so we can write that. Um, I tend to use V bar with a dot over it. V bar, remember, volume dot is uh, is uh, the flow rate. Okay. Find the power used by that fan for the density of air used. One point one eight. Kilograms per meter cubed. So if we have a fan <coughs> running, obviously we need some electrical power input to it, you're asked to find that. Now, 
some of these problems you might feel you've got the right stuff you just know how to put it together so look at the units pay attention to the units they can often tell you what to do with some of these things I think this being one of them oh, it's the last class of the day we need a get out of class question okay. Oh, Is not right yet. Oh. Jeez, not not forty five minutes before the end of class. <laughs> Actually, Bill, you're doing a good job. You can go ahead and go. Define a system boundary. Just put it around the fan, that'll do, because that's all we're talking about. We have this electrical energy coming in to run it, and it's accelerating the air from that electrical energy. So, any of those terms zero? Change in potential energy is zero, certainly. Potential energy itself might not be, but the change is, and that's what we're concerned with, is the change of potential energy. significantly warmer or significantly cooler than when it went into the fan. It feels cooler, 
But that's convection on your skin. That's the other purpose of fan. So that's why we accelerate the air so we get the breeze across the skin. But the air itself, it'll warm up a little bit, but not significantly. So this term is also zero. What? Uh, you know the conversion from kilogram meters seconds to watts? No, I don't because there isn't one. Because you can go to Newtons, right? Yeah, a, a watt, one watt is defined as one one Newton meter, remember that was a joule per second. So that would be a kilogram meter meter. Right. Kilogram meter meter. Kilogram meter no. squared. This, this is kilogram meters per second squared. So this would be kilogram meter squared per second, per second cube. cube. is coming in is going into the conversion of 
uh, to, to accelerating the air and the temperature is not increasing significantly. Yeah, they're warm, but it's, it's not uh, changing significantly, per se. So what we need then is m dot and v2 we've already got. So all we need is m dot. We need the mass flow rate. How do we find that? Add it for today? Yep. We'll take your books. <coughs> That's the times flow rate. The what? It's times the density. Well, yeah, if you look at the units, the units of flow rate times density will work out just fine. Kilograms will, uh, sorry, the meters cube will cancel out kilograms per second. Uh, this also equals rho a v if we're talking about flow through a particular area. And that's one of the problems uh, in the homework where you're looking at how much energy is produced by a wind turbine and is for different blade sizes. That's the flow area right there for our purposes. But we only need this first section here, 1.18 kilograms per meter cubed times, what was it, 4 meters cubed per second. And that will give you the flow rate of, of what, about 4.8, 4.72. Four point seven two kilograms per second. And then you have all the pieces you need now. What if what was the ten meters per second? Oh wait, gotta check the units. Those units okay? Might even be something you want to write down, maybe in your book by the conversion table that we have there. But one meter squared per second squared yes. is uh, is one. It'd be one. Uh, oh, what would it be without it? It'd be just one jewel, I guess. Well, we can figure it out. Oh, yeah. Well, the way you just laid out watts, kilogram meters squared over seconds cubed, is exactly what you got right there. Kilograms? Yeah. Well, this is well, what we're seconds. saying. What do these units give? Does this give watts? Mm -hmm. yeah. Kilogram meters squared. Seconds. Yeah, seconds so we squared. need to take the kilogram seconds out of it to get the meter seconds. And so that's what I was asking about. We want to figure out how many watts that equals. I may have to write it written down. We don't have to spend the time doing that. I forget. Man, two thirty-six. Two thirty-six. No, that's for the whole problem. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh yeah, there, there's a little one. One meter per second is one kill one. Watt per kilogram. Yeah. So that's pretty useful. Save you a little time that we would have spent doing that. So this comes out to be then 236, 236 watts. Okay. Now, uh, embedded in there is a large assumption that we made. Well, I guess we didn't make the assumption because we were finding out... Uh, yeah, I guess we, we made that assumption. We, we knew what we had to do in terms of the energy flow out of the system. We assumed that was equal to the energy flow that would be coming into the system. So we're saying that there was 236 watts was being supplied. 
However, it's not always true that these two things are equal due to real losses in systems. In this case, it's just the kinetic energy uh, power that's coming out. If those two are not equal, which they rarely are, then we need to talk about another term, Why did you the have efficiency. The, what? Why did you have the uh, steady state there? Why? Yeah, what did you mean by that? I meant that the system, the energy of the system itself was not changing with time. What that says is no energy is accumulating in the system, which would happen if this was greater than that. Or no energy is draining from the system, which would happen if this was less than that. All we're saying is that those two were equal. The same that's coming in is going out. Yeah. But there are other places. Uh, uh, what we've looked at so far is every other place that energy would leave a system would be from one of those things that was in the equation, but there are real losses due to all these things due to less than perfect efficiency. You guys can go to Ace Hardware and talk to Earl all the times that I can, especially to put things on the tab. So you have to buy things with real life efficiencies and they're generally defined as well, our symbol is eta, and then there are several types of efficiencies, but in general, the efficiency is defined as the benefit of doing something over the cost to do it. That will be our general definition of, ben of efficiency. So, for example, the benefit of running this system is to get the increased kinetic energy of the air. The cost is you have to plug it into the wall and pay for the electricity. We were assuming those were equal and then therefore the efficiency was one or a hundred percent. So in real life they're going to be less than a hundred percent. Some of the problems equal to 100%. So let's look at a problem where we use it. And this is where some of the confusion can come in because uh, there may be several places where uh, efficiency is lost. If we have some system with energy coming in, then there might be frictional losses, etc. There, we, we can even count thermal losses, whatever. And then E coming out is less than what went in. Uh, true with uh, the mechanical energy going into a turbine to spin it, true with the mechanical energy going into a generator to spin it to produce uh, electricity, and uh, several of these things may be in, uh, in series or even in parallel, and all of those inefficiencies have to be accounted for. So. A uh, 75 me horsepower motor is running and um, parts are replaced so that the efficiency is improved from 91. So with repairs made to improve efficiency. from 91%, meaning that 91% of the energy going into the motor, whether it's uh, from the, if it's a gas motor or an electric motor, doesn't matter in this case, but 91% of the energy going in is converted to useful mechanical energy by the motor. The rest is lost, probably the heat, some friction, noise, uh, 
our big concern is um, heat in this class. And so in this case, we want to find out the reduction in the heat gain. Which means if we find the heat loss for the two of them, we can figure out what the difference is between those. The more efficient motor is going a little bit cooler, so it'll be a, re a reduction in the heat gain. Not the heat gain of the motor, but the heat gain of the surroundings. Because if we're assuming it runs at steady state, the motor's not going to run any hotter as it runs, but the air around it is going to pick up heat. So the picture we've got is that we have this motor running due to the fact that it's, we'll say it's an electric motor plugged into the wall. That motor is running for some purpose. So we'll just call that the shaft work. We're going to hook a motor up to something, even if it's a, uh, a fan, a simple fan. It's to turn the shaft, which then turns the blades. But there are also heat losses because the motor heats up, bleeds heat to the room, increasing the efficiency, reduces that heat being lost to the room. We want to find the reduction in the heat gain of the surroundings by figuring out what that decrease in the heat losses is. Um, horsepower to watts. You know that one? Yes. Off the top of your head. Doesn't anybody have the conversion app on their phones? They make them. You have my permission to turn your phone on and use it. Or Malcolm will look it up in his book. I think it's the last page, the very last page of the book. You might want to photocopy that just so you have it handy. Yeah, we need to convert, well, we need to decide what units we're going to do it in, so I guess uh, kilowatts is pretty usual. Oh, maybe it's not the inter. Does the international? Oh, you may have taken. Yeah, there's the conversion. Actually, was that in the front? Yeah. So check the front, Stephen. Front of the book. International. No, it looks like the three-ring binder version has it in the front. Uh, I'm not sure where it is on the international version. The English version hard copy that I have has it in the back. So we need horsepower to kilowatts because we don't talk about heat loss in terms of horsepower even though it is just an energy term, an energy rate. So we'll do it in uh, kilowatts, we'll do it converted into metric units. Is it there? Yeah, the last conversion okay. factor is energy heat birth. So one one horsepower is what? Point seven four five seven. Point seven four five seven watts. Kilowatts. 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 Small. Seven hundred and forty six watts.
So what you can do is figure out, we know now that uh, that we're losing, uh, that we lo have some losses. So the efficiency is in terms of the benefit over the cost. The cost here is the electric energy we're paying for. There is a cost to that heat loss, an environmental cost, if you will, but that's not considered a thermodynamic cost because we're not paying for that. We're paying for the electricity and part of it is lost to that. And that electric is made up of both of those things. And oh, we can get the pieces from that. Um, the 75 horsepower is the rating, the output rating of the motor. So if you have to run one, you're going to need more than 75 horsepower to run it because of the losses. Right. I don't know. It's close. Might be just some round off difference. Yes, I round it. Okay. But yeah. So that's probably it. That's certainly the very close ballpark. There. Are other. So for two different instances, we're giving them the efficiency. We have the shaft work, that's the 75 horsepower rating, so you can find out the lost heat for both of them. The difference between those is the reduction in the heat gain in the surroundings, because that's where the heat is going. I didn't think I was going to have 15 in here. I thought maybe six. Remember we were talking about it not running? <laughs> we'll do you a favor. Will you stop Unless running? you lower the homework load to less questions and you'll have less problems. Oh, it's easy to get the homework. <laughs> I just created for format. That's easy. I just thumb through them and go, oh, this is funny. This, that's a good... Except for bills, I go, this is awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Alan's your favorite? 
Wait, that's not what I where where's my answer? I'm no. Yeah, that's what I uh -huh. oh, you're my favorite student now. Oh, because you got my same answer. I appreciate that. Appreciate it. Let me see what you got. Okay, that's I'm coming back. Four, two, oh, I got three. three. Oh, three. <laughs> Fix those units. We don't talk about heat loss in terms of heat horsepower, even though we could, but we don't. Because I'm telling you. What would you say? You're losing 75 horsepower to the air or something? Yeah. No, you're, it's horsepower, horsepower is a, an energy rate term. Shaft work. Let's see. That should be. Would you get fifty-five point nine kilowatts? That sound right? Yep. Yeah, fifty-five point nine. So that goes in both of those. The two different efficiencies allow you to find different cute loss temperature losses and so you'll be able to find the two of them. So we have uh, two of those. 2.46. Two. That's 2.46, not there. Got it? No, I can't. I've done it like five times. And I started off and I have the same numbers that you have so far. Okay, did you do it by solving this equation for that and finding it for the two different efficiencies? Not you, her. Step in the center of everything, don't you? You're like Nicki Minaj. <laughs> um, she's ruined American Idol auditions, which used to be fun. Now the other one, she just sits there and says, oh, look at me. Listen to me. I'm more important than anybody. You're mad. You mad. Not, not anymore. That's what I just said. Hey, she's right. ruined it. I don't want the show. It's been ruined. Would you? Anyway, I want to help her some. What's your problem? N is 0 0.04, Not N. Right? That's eta. 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 The efficiency. Is eta. what? Eta. Eta. Is 0 0.044, correct? Because it's a percentage of difference of 4.4. Oh, no, I would not do that. This is not delta N, because the math won't work out. We're looking for delta this. We're looking for, oh, I already erased it. We're looking for how this changes for the two values. So don't use the change in efficiency here to get the change in heat loss there. That won't work. Uh, the algebra won't work. So pretty much have to do it twice. So Q dot L, L for loss, will be Q dot shaft over the efficiency minus W dot shaft, or W dot shaft times 1 over eta minus 1. And so you can see the delta eta wouldn't work. The change in the efficiency won't work to give us the change in the heat loss. That's right. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. How does that? If it's ninety-one percent efficient to begin with, then nine percent is getting lost, right? Yeah. And then if it goes to ninety-five percent efficient, then a little over. 6% or 5% is getting lost. 4.6. Okay. How is that not the same thing as change in loss? Well, if, if, if you can show me it is. No, I just, I just don't understand. Because the, you, you, you can't have a delta here and a, a delta there that are related because algebraically this is on the bottom. So as this, if this went up, this would have to go down and vice versa. Oh, okay. So it's him and I were just subtracting, so we did the 4.4% uh, 4 change instead of 91 to 90. Mm -hmm. Right, that means if you do it that way, it's the same, right? Uh, if I understand. 
understand what you're saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Just kind of look at it backwards. Okay. Anyway, this is now, you've got that and certainly that, and so you can then just solve for the two. So the 91% efficiency rating heat loss was what? 5.56 kilowatts? And the for the 995 it loses a lot less heat, 2.8, no, no, 2, 2.67, I think it is. And then the difference between those is the reduction in the heat gain of the surroundings, because that's where the heat's going, is to the surroundings. And that's 2.86. A lot of times, a simple little picture will help with those problems. And where efficiency is, is a benefit over the gain. Gosh, that kind of cuts it close for a get out of class question. But, you know, if we don't get out till 2, we don't get out till 2. Just get more for your money. I'll give you one, you can go, but we'll make it a get back into class on Wednesday problem. Any questions of that before I erase it? Nate, make some sense as we go through it. Um, the subtlety of thermos can dissipate somewhat if you make a simple drawing. Because then you start to see where things are going, what we're talking about, what we're counting for. You just look at all the words sometimes and it looks really confusing. And you have to think about it. And if you take the definition of efficiency and step through what that means, then it becomes a, a much simpler problem. Alright, so another problem. Um, we have a pump. that pumps water up to a reservoir. Water, of course, being blue. <coughs> and supplying to the uh, pump 20.4 kilowatts. So the electric power being supplied to the pump is 20.4 kilowatts. Volumetric flow rate through the pump is 70 liters per second. We don't have enough unit conversion, so we want a new one in there. And the elevation gain by this pumping action is 20 meters. So I think that's all the pieces. Find the pump efficiency. By that, we mean this many kilowatts is being supplied. Only a certain amount of that is going to the elevation of that fluid up to 20 meters. The difference in those two will give you the efficiency. And find the pressure increase across the pump. That's what the pumps do. They pressurize the fluid that, and allows that pressure uh, to drive the fluid up the pipe. So that's the problem. If you get it done in less than five minutes, you can go. Actually, if you get the first part, you can go. That is my generous nature.
if you get the second part before the five minutes is up, you get a million dollars. What's so funny about that? You guys can just, you're rich enough you can just laugh at a million dollars? You're rich. <laughs> I mean, I am, but are you? You're poor undergraduates. I know you're not. I'm going to try this again. You're probably going to tell me to look at the book. You remember the density of water off the top of your head? Yes, I do. Because that's an easy one. Density of water is 1,000 kilograms oh, yeah. per meter cubed. Some yourself. It's too stupid. They couldn't say one equals one thousand. Evidently not. I bet they had it in there and they edited it out. Now that's that's your yeah. You, you guys, I think I told you you can leave this back yeah, half of the book at home. I already divided it in half. I just didn't take it out yet. I didn't want to take anything mm -hmm. for it now. I wasn't sure if there was stuff like this in the back. There's got to be something. Yeah, no, there's some tables that we definitely need. So <laughs> any appendices leave. Okay. And, and the, uh, uh, the index, I'm not sure where that is. You don't want to leave that out. Especially with as many new terms as we're coming across. Yeah, you want all those. Not yet, but we will. Yeah, you can stop there. See if that'll help come. Um, you can do that too, Malcolm. So again, the benefit over the cost is the efficiency of the pump. The benefit is the mechanical energy added to the fluid getting it up to that 20 meters, and the cost is the electrical, which we were given. Significantly, 
and the, the velocity change it's not necessarily insignificant, but we don't have anything else about that. We don't have the pipe sizes, we don't have any velocities, we don't have anything other than just the volumetric flow rate. So all that we need is delta P. From that you can find the mechanical energy, then you can find the efficiency. Once you've found the efficiency, then you can also find the pressure increase across the you know, across the pump. Now you can go to work. Oh, I want to stay. I want to stay and do some more. So the mechanical energy on top. Yeah. Is that W actually? And what's the units on that? Uh, Got to be the same units as this, because efficiency is unitless. So you might as well do it in kilowatts. So you should have kilowatts here. Efficiency has no units. Need your help for a second. No. Hundred dollars an hour consulting fee. Just a second. This is okay. One hundred dollars divided by. 3,600. For what? For the flow of the water. Okay. The flow rate? Yes. Where'd that come from? That's going to be 20 times 700. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be 20 times 700. Yeah. Yeah. Times 700. Yeah. 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 I don't know how to get that into kilowatts. Well, because a lot of kilogram meters squared is cute. Okay. Well, this is one, right? Because this is meters cubed over meters cubed. So the whole so the delta is 700 kilograms per second. Well, wait, who said m dot delta? The water is moving 20 meters. Yeah. So then it's going to be 700 kilograms per second times 20 meters. Is G. Because we already pulled the M out. Oh, I and G. There's, there's my other units. Yeah, there's your other unit. So how old is this in the first one? But how much are you? The younger could be 18. I put in my units. It's a reason. I know this is when you went on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you don't have units on that. Wait. You don't have units on that. I'll just wait a couple of minutes on that. Too. Oh, until uh, no, I have it's like uh, acceptable things. Uh, uh, by the way, can I hear it? And you don't have units on all of them. There were, you guys were in the lab, I'll be there. So, I don't like There's a little button near the top, and I think it looks like. Some, something like this. Well, I know it's a little tiny button. It's like it's I, yeah. it's four little, I don't remember what's that. that. If you click that, a table will come up and say, here's the variables you've used so far and the units we have so far. And you can just put the units in right there. Just type them right in. Oh, so you have to it. So I thought it's not like... So this is the ring. I don't know how to use it. Alright, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. When you have a number, you can put in the unit. When you're just using the value from calculating, you have to also actually enter the units on the table. Yeah. Oh, okay. And at any time, you can check your how things are going. You have to check all your units on the block. So do you want me to pull this up? Yeah. 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 Yeah.